as a young kid, I was a vicious artist, making art all the time. And it was very obvious that that was who I was. What's up guys? We are in East LA. Uh, my name is Tristan Eaton and this is my painting studio. So I've always been kind of a DIY artist. You know, my philosophy is to build a universe and invite people into it. You know, I'm not trying to knock on anyone else's door. Like my door is wide open. Come in and see my world. This is where I do a lot of design work and research work. Uh, we have some of my toys and sculptures on display that are coming out this weekend at DesignerCon. Uh, this is an example of some of the paintings that I make. My painting work is like visual collage, but hand painted. Uh, but this approach is more like collaging the actual materials. So the background is skateboard grip tape, and then you have uh, grayscale spray paint, and then wheat paste, laser etch, spray paint with a hydro dip. This is my little magazine I started called Trouble. Uh, I make these in like a very limited edition and each one comes signed. And it's basically like a look into the behind the scenes of my life, you know, artwork that people never saw, inspiration behind the scenes, that kind of thing. I started exhibiting um, in a gallery at 18 and I started designing toys for Fisher Price when I was 18 years old. And I started working at magazines and print shops, you know, as a teenager. By the time I got to New York, I was ready to go, man. Um, and definitely put in my work before the internet era, pounding pavements in New York City, taking my portfolio to all the cool magazines and hustling to make my, my life happen as an artist and having lots of setbacks all the way. You know, the first NFT project I did was a set of four and each one was in a limited edition. But the next one I'm doing is much bolder, much crazier. It's basically a generative project where we're making painting that has like 10,000 variations possible is generated at the point of minting. I've hand painted a canvas that's the base portrait of this girl. I call her Emma, uh, which stands for the Electronic Museum of Metaverse Art. <laughs> Here's Emma. These are the ones I haven't cut up yet, but there's multiple versions of how she's gonna be illustrated. Dope. Those, these are all the shapes that all the face filters are being cut from. I'm trying to set this whole thing up for success here. So no matter how you generate it, it's gonna look dope. It's so authentic to who he is and his painting style. His painting is portraiture, his painting is layers and conceptual and type. All of it together, mashed together uh, in ways that most people would never think to do. The fact that you can kind of communicate with your collector now in ways you've never been able to do is super exciting. I've basically created hundreds and hundreds of elements that will go on like uh, the collage and my paintings do. We're just kind of building it right now, so it's like very exciting. Uh, and so far what I've generated already look like paintings I, I would have made already and want to make now. The NFT world is so unique and so interesting. And I kind of like that no matter who you are in the real world, you start from zero here. It doesn't matter like what kind of celebrity you are, how famous you are, you got to kind of start from scratch in the NFT world. So I like that, but I was also scared a little bit. And oh, you want to see something really cool? In May 2020, SpaceX set my art to space. What I sent up were a series of metal plates about humankind. And we created basically a, a re entire replica. And then I actually like wrote this letter to the astronauts, which is a crazy thing to do to like, you know, welcome to space. <laughs> Working with Elon Musk is crazy. It was like, I didn't know if the art was approved until the next day. They're like, yeah, he took it all home. So he must've liked it. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll take that as a, a thumbs up. <laughs> You know, it's technically the first art exhibition in space, which is really cool. You know, to name drop in the NFT world, my man Beeple, we'd known each other uh, from the internet and spoke before, but I finally got to meet him in real life in May in Hawaii. And uh, we were like super tipsy hanging out. And I was like, all right, man, so what's your advice? And he was like, just take your time. Don't rush it. 
And that was like music to my ears. I've already kind of set up a precedent for how I am and how I act and how I interact with my fans and my world. So I don't really have to like reinvent the wheel here. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna keep doing what I do, but you know, adding this new platform and medium to it, nothing's ever um, sloppy or, or done with haste. You know what I mean? Like every project is very carefully curated. And with my art prints, for example, um, you know, I feel like, you know, once it gets boring, it's, it's death, it's over, man. You know what I mean? So with my art prints, I, I've done 3D art prints come with glasses, uh, black light prints, um, torn, glued, glued together, wild, interesting prints, and I, I try to really have a lot of fun with it. Um, so I'm gonna keep doing it the same way for NFT projects, you know? I have like a million ways that I wanna make work for this, this whole genre. So I, I do feel like I'm just getting started, um, but you know, uh, like with other areas of my art, what I enjoy a lot is uh, the interaction between myself and the collectors and, and what makes them excited and how you can keep it fun. Reverse shoplift. So I put them in stores and then people would have to steal them out. Super A Foods, Mad Chill Vibes, this might be the one. Open backpack, bro. See, that totally him. And you know, after like the hundreds and hundreds of paintings I've made, being able to pull from that library to like re-collage and revisit elements that um, I've used in the past and be able to bring them into new light with this brand new portrait is just really exciting, man. I think there's really something to the aspect of the NFT world that cuts out the middlemen. That's another kind of through line in, in my life is kind of like killing the middlemen along the way. You know, the advancement of social media, it's given me and a lot of other artists the ability to connect directly with our fans. And that's kind of a revolution, you know, a lot of galleries are not happy about that because we don't really need them anymore. Uh, I, I am planning on kind of lottery style choosing one person and painting their design that was generated onto the actual canvas to gift them. I'm really excited about it, man. <laughs> I can't wait. And you know, I, I hope that uh, the, in, the user involvement of it kind of uh, brings a lot of excitement to people too. You know, people that uh, already like my work and already collect my work can now have a greater hand in how it's actually made. That's pretty wild. And I'm, I'm hoping it's impossible to have any ugly ones, you know? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So it's too expensive, just bite the bullet, man. And I think that, you know, the NFT world is uh, a part of that same psychology, you know, where the middlemen are going away and you can access your fans and collectors directly. And a lot of the pomp and circumstance of like putting the artist on this pedestal um, changes into something where you can communicate and interact with an artist in a way that has a little more meaning um, and a little more substance to it. I think all of that's really healthy. Uh, healthy for the longevity and independence of artists, period.